In my previous Android versus iOS videos, the iPhone always took the lead when it comes to the native messaging experience because of iMessage and the number of features it offers. While I still think that's the case, but the gap is much smaller than ever before after the support of RCS messaging in Google Messages. Plus, the number of new features Google releases pretty much every week made me curious to know how they stack against each other in 2024. In this video, I will compare both in four different categories. I will cover everything from basic to advanced. Each one will take a point per feature and a half a point extra for the better implementation if both offer the same functionality. So let's start with the chatting experience. In both, you get typing indicators, red receipts, and replying to certain messages by swiping to the side like well-known messaging apps, which is a draw so far. But let's talk about the exclusive features on each side. Starting with iMessage, you can edit your sent message within 15 minutes or unsend it entirely within two minutes. In addition to a feature called Notify Me. When it's on, you will be notified when your name is mentioned, even if the conversation is muted, which is a very smart idea. On the other hand, Google Messages has the Smart Suggestions feature, which offers quick replies, emojis, stickers, or actions based on the received message content, which you can use to respond with one tap. In addition to Magic Compose that uses AI to give you a human-like responses with the ability to rephrase your own text in tons of different ways, which can save you some time if you want something special. Plus the ability to schedule your reply to be sent at a certain date and time right from within the app, which is very handy. So far, each one has its own strengths and it's a draw between the two. So let's talk about audio messages. On both, you can record and send audio messages. You can seek forward or backward by dragging your finger over the timeline and automatically transcribe the received recording if you prefer to read it rather than listening. So three points each, but there are some important differences. First, both give you the option to save the recording to your device storage, but iMessage saves it to the Voice Memos app, which is much easier to locate and manage later, while Google Messages saves it somewhere on your phone and you have to open your media player like YouTube Music for example, and search for it to play it, which makes it much harder to organize your saved recordings over time, so one and a half point to iMessage versus only one point to Google Messages. iMessage is also better as it has the option to adjust the playback speed from 1x up to 2x. You can put the phone on your ear to listen to the recording privately, same as WhatsApp, and do the same to reply in voice when the recording finishes playing. And finally, set the app to automatically delete audio messages after two minutes unless you choose otherwise. All these features are missing from Google Messages, but it can only do one thing better, which is the ability to search for words from within audio messages after being transcribed, which is an amazing feature that iMessage lacks. So iMessage takes the lead in the chatting experience, especially in the voice messages. Now let's move on to the second most important category, the sharing options. You get all the basic options we use daily on both sides, like sharing photos, files, location, etc. But iMessage takes it further by allowing the integration with other apps. As an example, I can share a Zoom meeting invite right from the app, which is very convenient, or music from Apple Music and more. So one and a half point to iMessage versus only one point to Google. When it comes to sharing photos, you can share in original quality or lower resolution to save data on both sides. But what Google Messages does better is the ability to view Ultra HDR photos from within the app, which is not possible in iMessage. So one and a half point to Google versus only one point to iMessage. Sharing your profile name and photo is also available on both sides, but iMessage has the edge in a lot of ways. Like the ability to choose between contacts only or always ask, you get a lot of editing options to create your poster which are missing from Google Messages. So half a point extra to iMessage. On top of this, iMessage has two more features you won't find on the other side, which are the ability to share your focus status so the other person will see if you have your notifications silenced, which is nice. Plus the shared with you feature that shows you received media or links inside other apps to easily interact with them outside iMessage. So iMessage took the lead in the sharing category, making the gap even bigger with 20.5 points versus only 14.5 to Google Messages. The third category is the fun features. Starting with the emojis, only Google Messages has the animated emojis, which gives it a point. 
For the reactions, both do have the functionality, but also Google Messages is the only one that gives these cool animations when used, so it takes half a point extra. On the other side, iMessage has an amazing feature, which is the support for multiple reactions, plus the ability to overlay them over the message bubble, which looks really nice. So one point to iMessage. Creating stickers from photos is also possible on both sides to share or use them as reactions later, but what iMessage does better is the ability to add effects to your stickers, which is not the case with Google Messages, so half a point extra to iMessage. Moving to the camera, with Google Messages you can only use it for sharing photos or videos, while iMessage can utilize it in a much better way by allowing you to add memojis, filters, text, shapes, stickers, and many more, so one point only to iMessage. Not to mention that you also get the Memoji and Animoji features that also use your phone's camera to create some funny videos by reading your facial expressions and mimic them on other subjects, and the accuracy is mind-blowing. You get digital touch that records your touches and animate them in a cool way with the ability to integrate it with the camera and record yourself while doing this. Even more, iMessage has the text animations, so you can choose between four different effects for your text message or combine it with full screen animations, and they don't only animate, but the haptic feedback you get when it plays is so cool. The only two exclusive features you get with Google Messages are the full screen animations when you send certain phrases but without any haptic feedback. And the second one is the ability to change the conversation colors by choosing between nine different options. So in the fun features, iMessage is ahead by far with a total score of 30 points versus only 20 for Google Messages, which is a massive 10 points gap. Category number four and the last one is the security and the privacy. Starting with the encryption, both do offer end-to-end -end encryption, but with Google Messages, it doesn't work in group chats, while iMessage offers encryption across the board, so it takes half a point extra. Plus, iMessage has an exclusive feature called check-in. For security purposes, you can share your personal data with a person you trust to check on you after a specific time or when you arrive to a certain location. You can choose to share full or limited data, like your location, phone's battery, network signal, and more, so one point only to iMessage. So that's it when it comes to RCS messaging versus iMessage. It's obvious that Google is far behind in this area with a gap of 11.5 points, but it's still much better than what we used to have few years ago. I hope this video will make a difference and I will keep an eye to see how things will change over time. I'm curious to know what you think in the comments, but for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.